who have not graduated yet. Definitely don't become an employee. And there is an exception that I will tell you now. Let me say it in a way that will make you always remember it. You know slaves. Who are slaves? Slaves in the past are those people who are owned by others. The slave has no control really of his life or her life. They cannot make any decision for themselves. They cannot travel without the permission of their masters. They cannot get in or out without the permission of their masters. And uh, they are paid peanuts at the end of the month. In the past they called them slaves, now they call them employees. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you're an employee, can you make decisions without the permission of your master? Can you leave without asking permission? Can you get in and out? Can you travel? And whatever they are paying you, is it worth the years you spent studying? It's not worth it. Definitely, definitely have your own projects. The exception to this is the following. If you are a new graduate, or if you already graduated, you are working. It's okay to work for three to five years, but not more than five years. For the purpose of training, for the purpose of training yourself, for knowing your field, building relations, getting expertise, learning the skills, go ahead. If you say, for example, if you graduate from law school, don't start your own business immediately. Go work for a law firm for three years minimum, maximum five years. Learn, learn the industry, learn the ins and outs, learn the secrets, and work at the best law firm that you can find. The best. Even if they pay you nothing. Consider it part of your training. And then, remember, you're not working for the sake of work, you're working for the sake of learning. So, ask about everything. Try to learn everything. Get involved in everything. Ask a lot of questions. Learn. And then, you build your own project. How do you build your own project? First of all, you find an idea that people need. Something that is not available. Uh, there is a gentleman who tells his story. He said, I was looking for an idea. But I couldn't find it. Something that really people need. And uh, everything that I thought about, it was available. So I asked my mother. And she said, my son, find something that people can use and dispose of. So they will buy it again. She said, what? I, said, I don't know, but this is the general rule. So the next day, he went into his bathroom, started to shave. He said, why do I use the same shaver every day? Why don't I use a disposable shaver? So he invented the disposable sh shaver because of that advice of his mother and his name was Gillette. So, this is an, an idea, something that people need. I don't know what is suitable for you or your field or your area, but you have, you have to think. I can't think for you. You have to think. So, find an idea. Now, many people will ask me, Yes, an idea is easy, but finding the capital is difficult. Listen, I've started 80 companies in my life. Started them from scratch. I have never started a company with money available. It was never available. How do you get the capital? Listen, young men and women. If you think, and there are exceptions, but if you think that you can save enough capital to start a business, then you're wrong. So, where do I get the capital from? You use other people's money. You don't use your money. 
If you wait until you have enough capital to start your own business, then you'll probably wait 30 years maybe. So, where would I find people that will lend me money or give me money or uh, be partners with me? It's very simple. If, you, if all of your relatives, your friends, those who know you and trust you, if all of them are poor, then you cannot raise capital. So you go ahead and be friends with those who are rich. <laughs> true. But, I mean, true friendship. But this is the way you do it. You build, you plan and build through friendship, through relations. And then, you're, you, you take your idea and turn it into what we call a feasibility study. Is it feasible? Will it make money? And then you present it to your rich relatives or friends or whatever, bankers. And if they see that it will make money for you and them, they will jump in. I have never done this and waited for money. It's always available. Believe me, young men and women, believe me, there is more money in the world that you can imagine. There are, one day, one, one young man said, the problem is the idea. Said, I, the problem is the money, not the idea. I said, believe me, if you have an idea and a feasibility study and you're trustworthy, then tomorrow $300 million can be arranged. But you have to do it right. People who don't trust you will not give you money. If your feasibility study is wrong, see there are things, let, let me give you a small advice. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a consultant, so I know some of this. If your feasibility study promises me to make 100% a year, I will not take it. Immediately, I know that you are too naive. See, enthusiastic young men and women, 100% will make you 100%. We know immediately that you're too naive. If you can make 20 to 30%, that is outstanding. So don't exaggerate. Be on the safe side. If you promise me 20 to 30 and then you make 50, I'd be happy. But if you promise me 100 and make 50, then you're in trouble. <laughs> so do it right. Listen, I have a very strange advice for you who are still in college. Don't graduate. Take your time. Truly, I'm, I'm serious. Take your time. Unless your parents pay for you like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but take your time. Take courses. Take accounting. Take a feasibility study courses. Settlers. Take management. Take Learn, you learn, you need these skills later on in life. Why the haste? Why do you want to graduate quickly? Unless there is a financial reason for it. But other than that, don't graduate quickly. The more skills you gain during your studies, the more production you will have later on. Listen, listen. It is not how much knowledge that you will have that will determine your production later on in life. It is not your knowledge. It is your skills. So no matter how much knowledge you have, just imagine with me, somebody who studied the, uh, the depth of philosophy, but she or he doesn't know how to write a book, doesn't know how to do a presentation, doesn't know how to do a TV program, doesn't know how to answer interview questions on a journalist, uh, from a journalist. How would they produce? So it is your skills that will determine your production, not your knowledge. So, gain as much skills as you can early on in life. My advice is the following. Divide your life into two sections, two areas. And um, the dividing age to me is the age of 30. Plus, minus, a little bit, okay. 